Hello everyone, this is King Vector 11 with a general tutorial of how performance tunings affects your vehicle. This is a general tutorial for all drivers of Need for Speed Most Wanted and is only meant to help understand your comfort zones on how you want to tune your vehicle. If you like this tutorial, please do leave a like and subscribe and share with your friends and so on and so forth and I love you all for it. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. To start off, all performance tunings are available when you have the following performances or parts on your vehicle. Steering and handling are available from tire performance upgrades, brakes from brakes, ride height from suspension, uh, aerodynamics from a spoiler on your vehicle, nitrous for nitrous, and turbo or supercharger for turbo and supercharger. To start off with steering, steering changes how hard or light your vehicle steers. If you set your steering to the negative side, However, if you set your steering to the plus side, you will notice how you lose your speed much faster when you have it more plus than if you had it towards the negative side. So in the end, the only thing that steering affects is your top speed. Depending if you have your steering more on a plus or more on the minus affects how hard your vehicle can achieve your top speed. Of course, it slowly loses top speed on the negative side, but it loses top speed greatly when it's on the plus side. For handling, this affects how much looser your vehicle is from the ground or how much gripper it has against the ground. Of course, if you set your handling to the negative side, this is what happens. However, if you set your handling all the way to the plus side, You can generally see how if you set the handling all the way to the negative side, your car is more likely to slide and really not give two shits if it has to turn again, which will most likely keep as much top speed as it could while also affecting your handling because it's handling which makes it looser from the ground. However, if you set your handling all the way to the plus side, of course, you will be able to grip against the road no problem and be able to keep some top speed. But if you have to be able to turn again, your car is going to drift badly. It's going to lose a lot of traction because in a way, you have your traction at the beginning. But then if you have to do a sharp turn, your car is still going to be stuck going one way while you're turning the other way. So your handling is going to get messed up, your traction is going to mess up, and in turn, it's going to start drifting. So negative handling just gives its own automatic drifting if you want it to like loosen up a bit. But if you want it to really drift, you have to give it the grip to initially start turning one side to then turn the other side. I will speak about brakes at the end since that is a more complex performance tune that a vehicle has. So let's speak about ride height. Ride height changes how low your vehicle is 
or how high your vehicle is. Let's see what happens when your ride height is all the way set to negative. Now if we set the ride height all the way up to maximum instead. You wouldn't have been able to notice, but if you set your ride height all the way down to the negative, your car being stuck against the road is in a way better than if your car was lost off the road. What I mean by this is, when it's against the road, you have a better chance to catch more air over your vehicle, pushing it down, giving it more acceleration, being able to catch up to more top speed. However, if the ride height was set all the way to the maximum instead, air would go up but will also go under the vehicle, which in turn gives a force going against the vehicle, which won't be able to push it to the maximum as it would please, if that makes sense. Now aerodynamics, this is a very fun, let's say, performance tuning a vehicle has. This of course being given by the spoiler, this is the only performance tune that isn't available from a performance purchase, but is available from a part purchase instead. What aerodynamics does is if it makes your car like feel more lighter from the ground or if it becomes more of a magnet against the ground. To give you a demonstration, putting aerodynamics to negative side basically does this to your vehicle. However, setting your aerodynamics towards the plus side of your vehicle does this. In some ways, in the end, after discovering this, aerodynamics affects all three, top speed, acceleration, and handling. Not as much acceleration, so in a way I could most likely get rid of this feature, but aerodynamics, what it does is if your car is more looser from the ground, feels more like a plane, it will have basically so one thing's for sure, I'm just uh, referring to another guide. The other guy's kind of BS, okay? Let's just listen to this one. Aerodynamics, if you set it to the negative, it will stick to the road. If you set it more towards the plus side, it's going to make it feel slightly more lighter. Most likely because the person hadn't explained to me, or hadn't explained perfectly or properly, that aerodynamics, for its own mathematical function, if the bar exceeds a certain point, it will start to invert and it will invert the other way for the other side. So generally, what aerodynamics does is if it gets set to the negative side, it doesn't become a plane, okay? It sticks to the road. But if you set it more to the plus side, it becomes lighter. And from what I've just done in front of you, if you set aerodynamics to the most maximum possible without any programs, it will stick to the road, it will be able to achieve its top speed. Such as basically doing this again. This is with aerodynamics going on the plus side, and this is with aerodynamics towards the negative side. 
So in a way, whoever I learned it from basically screwed up. They didn't explain it properly. Okay? They basically all they did was just explain like whatever if you can do more than negative five or plus five. Basically, aerodynamics makes you stick to the ground, not feel like a plane. And if you set the aerodynamics to the plus side, it makes you feel more like a plane lifted off from the ground than if it were a magnet. That's where the other person screwed up. Yep, I'm sorry for that. Let me just, um... Yep, screw this paper. I'm done. <laughs> so generally, how aerodynamics gets affected. It gets affected by top speed and handling because if it feels lighter from the ground, that's when you have, that's when you know there's less traction your vehicle can catch up to, which means there's less handling. However, if aerodynamics makes the car stick to the ground more and makes it fly more against the ground, smoother, like so flush and it catches up speed to speed, that means you're able to achieve your top speed and your handling is more sharper than it normally would be. Of course, this is one of the most fun, yet one of the most confusing performances that a vehicle has, but not everyone understands aerodynamics, and uh, you're welcome. Now for nitrous, what this means, what this does, is if you want your tank to last longer while giving less boost, or to have the most accelerative boost possible, with, of course, using it only in two seconds. Let's give a test of what happens when Nitrous is all the way to negative. However, if your nitrous was set all the way to the plus side, Generally noticing that if your nitrous is set all the way down to the negative side, sure you will be able to get just a little bit of boost, but that little bit of boost also helps your handling, as every time you activate nitrous, you get just an extra boost percentage of handling during the duration that you are using it. Which of course, in the end, will slightly boost your acceleration, which will also help you slightly boost against going towards your achieved top speed. Now if you set it all the way to the plus side, you will get a huge boost, like greatly, which will in turn give you the most of your acceleration, achieving towards your top speed really fast. And then again, handling from N2O still comes into factor. Because if you use it, let's say on the turn, you will be able to catch your traction in legit a snap. Now, for the performance, second to last one, performance, supercharger, or turbo, what does it do? Basically, I don't even know if I could trust the other person or whatever they said. Let's just test it out, okay? 
supercharger, let's sit all the way down to negative and let's test it out. Now what happens if we set a true supercharger towards the plus side? So there really wasn't much change when I either flipped it towards the negative side or the positive side. But what does it really do? Generally, what a supercharger does, at least in this game, when you set it towards the negative side according to what the person has said, it would trade in your achievable top speed for better acceleration so that you can accelerate from practically any speed you want which is especially more useful when you're doing hard turns and your car is under revving in most cases but if you set your supercharger to the maximum it means you're basically relying on the supercharger or turbo for the most top speed while your acceleration will still be light as possible when you're in top rev speeds but of course, if you lose that rev, your top speed will have a harder time catching up to, which in turn basically doesn't give you that much top speed achievement until you finally achieve that rev again. Setting it to the lowest, of course, supercharge is most useful when doing drag races because you're only relying on the highest revs possible. And if you crash, well, the race is end. That's it. Now, finally, we have the brakes. Of course I saved the brakes for last because it has even more complex explanation than if you set the brakes towards the front or the rear. Setting it towards the rear means you set your brakes all the way down to negative or setting your brakes towards the front sets it to the plus. Let's test it out shall we? Let's set it towards the negative and let's see what happens. Now what if we set the brakes towards the plus side instead? It's honestly funny how when I hit the brakes at negative setting, it started to slide when I was achieving 80 kilometers an hour. And then when I set it to the plus side, it started sliding when I was at 20 kilometers an hour. It's pretty interesting, honestly. So brakes being the most complex performance tune there is in this game, all it really affects generally is just your acceleration and handling. And what I mean by this is, if you upgrade brakes on your car, you're going to get yourself a lot of handling. But also, your top speed starts to drop slightly over time, which in turn drags your acceleration to either slow down just a tad, but it's very unnoticeable, generally. In fact, speedrunners don't even like putting brakes on their car. 
because they only rely on the tires to give them the steering and handling that they need. But of course, brakes does give your car like a decent amount of handling. But in some cases, the handling becomes too good and it makes the car slow down in a way. Like it chops its top speed, but it gives it that acceleration and it gives it that handling. So generally, brakes is pretty funny to play with, honestly, but it's one of the most complex performances to be with. Now, the real question is, how do you play with your performance tuning? Well, let's start off with the steering part, okay? Steering, of course, as we know, changes how hard or how light you want to steer. Now, to play with your steering, if you want it to turn harder, you can also change with the handling. And depending if you're doing turns or not, if you're using more accelerative power, if you want to let go of the gas, if you just want to do a turn, do a drift or something, then brakes also comes in to play. But that's all really that works together as one. Now, here's a little funny uh, situation. If let's say I set my steering to the maximum, and my handling to the maximum. Let's test that out. I'm surprised only minimum happened, but what really is supposed to happen is if you sit oversteer with maximum handling, chances are you'll flip your car really badly. But that's maybe because I also need ride height, but anyways, that's besides the point. Okay, that's only, that's only besides the point. Brakes also place a turn because... Let's just read, uh, yeah, never mind. Let's forget about the reading part. I'll only explain how I know it. Okay, now the ride height, okay, this little feature of if you want your car to feel like an SUV or not is also playing a role with aerodynamics. Let's say your car was all the way stuck into the road, but it also was practically a traffic magnet or basically a car magnet against the ground. What would end up happening is, because negative makes your car feel looser, as I've said, like in a way, even though it shouldn't, because if it feels looser, why does it give more achievement to top speed when if it's in the plus side? I don't know, aerodynamics is also confusing. But let's just say this, okay? I don't know, aerodynamics is confusing as well as brakes. So let's say your ride height was stuck against the road, but aerodynamics made your car feel more like a traffic magnet. Basically, what would happen is every time you would take a jump or even a little speed bump, your car's gonna lose a little of speed, and I mean loads. So be careful when doing a feature like this. Sometimes you wanna set your aerodynamics to the lowest in your ride height, not really to the most, because it will cut your top speed achievement, but it also won't really cut your top speed that you have every time you're taking a jump. So that's only that's the only play that you have with your vehicle. Ah, uh, yes, Nitrous. The thing everyone loves to play with. Yeah, what I mean by it is every time you have to race, someone always has to pop a Nitrous tank. But be careful though, because nitrous also affects your handling. What I mean by this is, every time let's say you're sliding or you're taking a turn and you begin drifting and you want to catch up your speed while someone else is right behind you, what you really want to do is pop a nitrous. But be careful how much handling you set, because if you set your nitrous to give you the most of your acceleration as possible, when you have a lot of handling, your car most likely will flip, especially on different terrain. Than what I'm driving on. So be careful with that. 
Now the supercharger that is right here is quite complex to understand what role it plays with. But as I have said, if you drop your supercharger down, it will give more acceleration than top speed. However, if you set it to the plus side, it will give more achievement for top speed than acceleration. And that's only if the supercharger Generally, what I mean by it is, it's not only if big deals of the supercharger, it's if you're driving and you're always on your most rev possible, then it will be able to achieve top speed and then you could set it to plus and there's no worries. But if you're afraid that you're going to lose top speed and you're going to under rev, that it's best to set it down towards the negative. So what does it really get affected by? It could only really be affected by aerodynamics and ride height at the most knowledgeable tunes possible. And here's the reason why. To achieve your top speed, you need to have a low ride height with an aerodynamic shift that sets your car to achieve top speed faster. If you're able to achieve top speed faster and your supercharger is there with you, it will help your car give that extra boost that it needs to get to that maximum rev. However, if you're, tu if you're turning a lot and you're jumping and your car is like, I'm going to do a barrel roll in the middle of the street because I feel like it, then setting your charger down to the negative will also be pretty helpful since it will help your car give the extra acceleration that it needs from the low revs just to be able to pick up that momentum, just to, just to keep the momentum up. But it won't really give that much end game top speed that it needs at the most speed that it can achieve. So generally, this is how I've planned my tutorial, and if it's too long, I'm very sorry, but that is as much detail as I could possibly give with all the examples that I've seen. Really the most confusing thing is the brakes, because brakes doesn't really only affect how hard you're braking or not, but it also gets affected by the handling too, the handling affects it, so on and so forth. But that's really it. Anyways, if there was anything that I haven't clearly explained, or if anything that's still misunderstanding, please do let me know. I might make a better tutorial because this one is just my pre-basic understanding, so I'll have to think about it more often. But if you do like it, please do leave a like, subscribe, and thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace out and good luck and have fun and keep your racing in the game and on the street. Thank you.